Rib Ribbon fucks so hard it makes me cum. I don't know how true this is because fuck man, how can I be expected to know every single video game in existence, but Parappa the Rapper is often considered the first rhythm game. Whether or not that's true, it's definitely the most influential game to the rhythm genre. But that's what happens when you get Masaya Matsuda and Nana Onsha to make a game. Shit's gonna be about music. And while Parappa is the face of Nana Onsha, my girl Vibri would never steal 100 bucks from you. That's real, by the way. I do love Parappa, but man, Vibribin has got to be my favorite Nana Onsha game. Vibribin isn't nearly as well known as Parappa, even further cementing myself as a cyber hipster, because Vibribin released on the PlayStation only in Japan and Europe, so us in the Americas didn't have easy access to it. In addition, Vibri wasn't playable in the smash hit PlayStation All-Stars. But we did eventually get it over here over the PS3's digital storefront. What the hell is Vibribbon anyway? It's a rhythm game, as is Nana Unsha Shtick, where you play as Vibri. There she is. I would slit someone's throat if they ever did anything to harm her. As Vibri, you run along the ribbon avoiding obstacles corresponding to a button on the controller. Or is it the Vib Ribbon? Listen, man, the manual refers to that line as both the Ribbon and Vib Ribbon, so I don't know what the fuck to do about that. There's an adorable and pretty concise how to play included in the game that tells you all the basics you need to know. Press R1 to go through the loop or X to roll over the squiggle. Fuck you, I'm saying X, don't come at me with that cross shit. Two button combinations will come up and just don't fuck it up. Just be perfect all the time, not too hard, right? Also, while not explicit and encouraged in Parappa, freestyling is a mechanic in Vibberman. Completely optional, just affects the score. Also only ever mentioned in the manual. Now I'm left with a harder than you think decision of which version of this game do I play. Do I get the original PlayStation game, the way it was originally released and is the most quote unquote pure experience? Do I get it off the PS3 store, which would be the only official release not only in the US but in HD? Or do I download and emulate the game because that would be the most convenient and comes in at the low low price of free 99? Well, Fuck it. I'll just play all the versions. And there are several reasons to do so explicitly and only because I'm making this video. For the average, normal, insane person, just fucking emulate it. I've got a Japanese PlayStation. I got it so I could play Lane on disc because I make poor financial decisions, no really I need help, so I was able to just order the game off eBay, which is pretty sick. Here's the issue. The PlayStation outputs this video through composite cables. Looks like shit on recording and even worse in HD. Well, shit, how about the PS3 version? That's an HD and looks way better recording, but there is an issue that isn't visible. Input delay. There is a noticeable time difference between pressing the button and Vibri acting on that button press. Not much, but in a rhythm-ass game, that difference in time is very meaningful compared to other genres. So that leaves emulation, which is the best way to play since it don't got that input delay and can look as good as you want. But it has a massive flaw to it that I'll get to later. So I had to use all three versions for the production of this video, though you won't be seeing much of the PlayStation's version. Vibberman has its tracks split up into three difficulties, bronze, silver, and gold, with each difficulty containing two tracks each. The songs for this game's tracks are all composed by the band Laugh in Peace. Start. Bronze's first song, Polaroid, is of Vibberman's songs the most minimalist and slow. Polaroid is a really solid introduction into the game since not only was the rhythm genre in its infancy at this time, but also because Vibberman requires an adjustment period to get used to its controls. This track doesn't ask you for much. You're asked only to press a button at a time, focusing first on the right half of the controller in the first section of the song, then the left half in the second section. And by the third and final section, you should have a grasp on the fundamentals, which button to press for each obstacle and when to press it, which is perfect timing for the song to speed up a little bit. An excellent warm-up track and introduction to how the game plays. The song after Sunny Day is probably my favorite song from the game. It's so catchy, fun, bright, and uplifting. Just a nice song to put on and listen to. Picking up where Polaroid left off at, you're no longer operating on an obstacle exclusively on every fourth beat. You're playing a real fucking rhythm game now, son! Things are getting a bit more complicated with differences in rhythms, but still completely manageable. You still gotta keep up because the song will only get faster every section. At the end of every rank, you'll be given your score through Vibri giving you a song and dance, and she will let you know if you got a high score as well.
you fuck up and there's consequences to your actions. Hope you feel bad. With Bronze done, Silver's first song, Laugh in Peace, is getting a lot more experimental and wild with its sampling and stretching and warping and fucking with the BPM to keep you off kilter in a good way. Section 1 isn't too far different from how Sunny Day ends, but in Section 2, the song starts to slow down with the player having to adapt with the measure stretching in length before speeding back up to normal. Don't get too comfortable for Section 3, because now the song is going faster. The fastest the game has asked of you so far. And while you're rhythmically going through the loops at the same frequency, the game shows you that obstacles can overlap and move through the rhythm. The game shows you this mechanic without requiring you to change anything in how you're playing at that moment, which is really clever in tutorializing you before throwing you into the deep end. But before you hit that deep end, gotta finish Silver with the lamest track to play. Still a good song, but the track is just repetitive with not much going on for it. It's very much pressing the corresponding button at the same damn interval throughout the whole song. It's not that hard to do, especially at this point. The track does take the time to show you that the camera isn't going to be static. It will move to show the ribbon at a different angle, which not even all the possible different angles are shown here. It's not the best on replay and easily the weakest track. And now for Gold. The first of Gold's tracks is Overflowing Emotion, and now we're finally getting those combination obstacles introduced in the How to Play. Like Polaroid, the track is going to start off giving you the combination of the controls right half, then the left, before going through other combinations. It's a good thing that this song starts off slower to ease you into these obstacles, because it can take some extra time to register what button combination the obstacle headed straight towards Vibri wants you to press. It is still a fun track to play, nonetheless. And the last of the songs, Roll Along. This is pretty much the culmination of all you've seen so far, combining all but one of the possible tricks Vib Ribbon will throw at you. It's a little more challenging than Overflowing Emotion, but if you're capable of playing through and beating that track, then you shouldn't have much problem here. Vib Ribbon is really good at tutorializing the player through these six tracks, with each song starting off as hard as the last track ended, the difficulty curve flowing naturally through each track. You're getting lubed up for the absolute ass fucking you're gonna get soon. But, uh, only six songs? That's it? What fucking rhythm game includes six songs? Well, this one does, because it doesn't need to have that many songs included since the player can bring their own. That's right. You can put your own CD in, and Vibberoon will generate tracks for each of those songs on that CD, which is mad impressive. This game had to be small enough to be able to run off of the PlayStation's fucking RAM, while another disc is in the disc drive. That's also why the game has such minimalistic wireframe visuals, to make it less resource intensive. Nowadays though, who the fuck owns CDs? What kind of dumbass asshole spends the money and takes up the space in their own house for outdated media? I mean, fuck, my computer doesn't even have a disk drive. Why would I even own CDs? Here's my CD collection that I will use to play this feature with. I'm gonna go in mostly alphabetical order when displaying them just to make it easier unless I'm directly referring to an album. I'm also going to have the name of the artist and album in the corner of the screen, and some of these albums came with games as well. Whether it just normally comes packaged with it like Silent Hill 3's OST. I straight up didn't know that that OST came with Silent Hill 3 until I opened the case and found that pleasant surprise. But other game soundtracks did come with special editions of games as well. I like to listen to music. Who fucking doesn't? I listen to it a lot while making these videos, which making these takes a lot of time, which means I need a healthy selection of music to listen to. Healthy selection of music across a wide spectrum of genres. Jazz, hip-hop, hardcore, post-rock, shoegaze. I love a variety of what I listen to. Otherwise shit just gets boring. What is the fun of only ever listening to one type of music or identifying yourself with a single genre? I like metal. That shit's great. But I don't understand why people call themselves metalheads, for example. There's so much good stuff out there to listen to and discover, and doing something like that is just the antithesis of how I like to approach media as a whole, not just music. That's why my collection looks like what it does. A few things to note. One, while I can't show you this Midori album, I can't show you this Midori album in full. Because YouTube don't like them tits on screen, the fucking killjoys. But fuck man, I love Midori. One of my absolute favorite bands. Two, this is Lane Bootleg. Strangely enough, it comes in a mostly cardboard looking box with not just the album, but poster, stickers, and a goddamn CD-ROM game. I played through that on my LP channel if you're interested in seeing what that's like. And lastly, here's nine fucking Toho albums. I found a great deal in the nine on eBay and swiped that shit up. Would have cost at least double what I paid had I decided to purchase them individually rather than as a set. 
Collecting and being able to hold and examine these albums in my hands have made me appreciate CDs more than I used to in years past. I do like my physical media. I buy games, DVDs, and Blu-rays all the fucking time. Arguably too much, but this is not the video for that, and unfortunately for my wallet and bank account, I'm adding CDs to that list of physical media to appreciate. I can hear them crying already. But it is always nice to examine the aesthetic choices that take place on CDs and releases whenever I first receive it. What the cover art looks like, whether there's inserts, and what those inserts' purposes are. A lot of the time they're lyric sheets, but could also be illustrative art, an expansion on the cover art, or could contain interviews and further thoughts on the songs on the album. And these CDs are why I'm using all three versions of Zibberbin available to me. I'm sure as shit not gonna play these on my PS3 with input delay, but I can't shove these into my PC without a disc drive, so I'm gonna be playing them on my own on the PlayStation and recording the footage from the albums on the PS3 version. Now, I'm not great at rhythm games, I don't play them too often to begin with, so unlike those who bust out the Adderall and lines of coke, I'm pretty... Fuck. 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 I wouldn't call myself the best at rhythm games. Fortunately for me, there is an auto option in Vibribin. Vibri will just go through the tracks on her own, and I can just hit record and walk away for a bit until it's done, and you don't have to see my shit gameplay. Okay, so CDs aren't exactly popular anymore since you can just download or stream that shit. No one's walking around with a fucking CD player in their pockets anymore. Not only that, some albums have never been given the CD treatment, are coming out just like the Xenoblade 3 OST, got that pre-ordered, or just stupid expensive. Why the fuck is Hikari no Kakeda almost 300 fucking dollars? That's bullshit! And that's why you don't have to actually own any CDs if you're gonna emulate Vibribin. Alright, listen up, you got your MP3s, Flax, or whatever the fuck. You're gonna open up some shit like Power ISO or whatever equivalent you got, make a new audio CD, throw your files in, and you save that shit as a .bin and .q file. There you go. Your own digital CD that you can use on any PlayStation emulator. All you gotta do is swap over when prompted, and you can play whatever you want in Vibribin. Even my own narration to this video right now. I have no idea what it's gonna look like since I've still gotta record and edit this before playing through it on Vibribin, so that'll be fun to see later. Here's the unfortunate thing about this, however. These tracks are generated. They aren't going to be handcrafted like the six built-in songs in this game, and it's gonna be a toss-up whether or not what you put in is fun to play, what its difficulty will be, or if it'll even be on beat. The way Vibribin generates its tracks, as far as I've read and experienced but I could be wrong, is by detecting changes in frequency. This definitely works, as you can see, but it isn't the best. Some songs will be fine difficulty-wise, being not that much more challenging than where gold left you off at, while others feel like you're drowning in that deep end. As I've said, I don't play rhythm games too often, and it could feel so overwhelming with bouncing between combinations, not all the obstacles are lined up with the song, fucking with my sense of rhythm. It can go really fast, and there's one last visual fuckery Vibribin can throw at you here in addition to everything else. What I've found is that Vibribin handles simpler songs better. The noisier and more complex it is, the harder Vibribin has at determining what's happening in the song. For example, take the Tasomachi soundtrack. A lot of that soundtrack is atmospheric, and when it comes to the way the songs are mixed, all the instruments are very clearly defined and pronounced. Vibribin likes that. It likes that clarity, as it is easier for it to determine when a sound starts and ends and can use that to determine where the beat is. I found that Nujibez's music translates well, but I don't want to worry about copyright claims, so I'll stick with just using video game music as an example. But Summon Hill 3 soundtrack is also hip-hop influenced, as it's got that trip-hop flavor. Breeze and Monochrome Night work surprisingly well off of the OST. The soundtrack also features a bit of isolated talking, by the looks of things, Vibberman prefers plosives when generating its tracks. The time when all will be forgiven their sins. When the paradise we have long dreamed for will arrive. But as I said, noisy songs, as much as I love them, don't play well with Vibribin. I used this album as my visual example for making a digital CD, and that album is Fade by Last Little While. And this is a doujin album that does shoegaze arrangements of songs from Toho and Perishable Night, and I fucking wish I could find a CD release of this album. Absolutely love it. This album leans more on the dreamy and wall of sound approach to shoegaze, which Vibberbin doesn't really know what to do with. The game, more often than not, doesn't know where to place an obstacle, so it's just like, fuck it, I guess I'll put this loop here, I don't know. Vibberbin gets a ribbon for trying its best. Vibribin, much like Parappa, received the spin-off followed by a sequel as well. But whereas Parappa's is Parappa but more, Vibribin's both aim to go somewhere unique and try something new. Moji Bribbon for the PS2 is actually pretty fucking sick. 
super stylish. This shit is doing the Sumie ink brush style three years before Okami did. Take that, Clover. I still love Okami, but people probably would've been referencing Moji Ribbon a little bit more in the art style hype discussion if this shit weren't localization poison. This game is nothing like Vibberman though, utilizing the right analog stick to play the rhythm game rather than buttons as well as hip hop focus rather than the electronic pop of Vibberman. A year later came Vib Ripple, and I don't really understand it. The rhythm gameplay was completely dropped in favor for trampoline searching? Playing through just the first level made me understand why this game never gets talked about nor why it was ever localized. After that, Vibri went MIA until the release of Astra's Playroom for the PS5. Astra's Playroom is largely a love letter to PlayStation history and there's some robot running along the ribbon. As cute as it is, it's also sad. Sony has changed and shifted its priorities to the blockbuster AAA title, much to my chagrin. While at least one person in Sony cares about its history, including Vibribbon, enough to greenlight Astro's Playroom, it doesn't look like those in charge do. Fuck you, Jim Ryan, you fuck! And Nana Onsha, as far as I can tell, still exist and were absolutely cracked at the turn of the millennium releasing unique bangers. I'd love to see Nana Onsha kept out of the mobile minds and be given a budget to do whatever interesting idea they've got cooking, but I doubt that it ever happened anytime soon. So while Vibberbin's ability to slot in your own disc isn't always the best, it future-proofs the game. We really don't need Vibberbin's 2, 3, 4, 5, or whatever number. So long as music continues to exist, Vibberbin continues to be given new life.